Hi friends. Hi friends, welcome back. It is the middle of May and everything is growing so fast in the garden right now that I cannot keep up. All of the stuff that I planted that is cool weather is coming to maturity and a lot of them are bolting, but a lot of the crops that are summer crops like my peppers and tomatoes are already in the ground and they are growing slowly, but very soon in June, they will get very big and I can make a lot of videos about harvesting those. Today I want to show you all around the garden. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video and more of a tour format. And maybe you can take some notes of the stuff that I'm growing here right now so that you can go to the store, buy those plants and put them into your yard as well. I have some rare plants that I have grown in my yard like maybe some gooseberries, maybe some guavas. So let me show you. The greenhouse right now is pretty much done producing the vegetables that were for the cold weather. But I have moved in here some of my peppers, some basil, and then I also have a row that is still producing right now of some leafy greens that are cool weather but they're going to be done very soon because it's getting very hot in here. This right here is some Swiss chard and check out the peas are producing tons of flowers and I have been harvesting some of this peas and my daughter really loves peas actually. Every time I show her one of these she wants to eat it. So that's the goal of having a garden is to feed your family. This is Mizuna, which is a mustard. And then we also have some color greens at the end here. And we have more peas down at this way. In the pots, I'm growing some eggplant. And I have nothing in here just yet. Got to put something in this one because it's wasted space. And I have some peppers. Then I have this tomato plant right here and it has flowers, as you can see. This is a glacier tomato. I planted this in the ground a few weeks ago but it was being shadowed by a bunch of radishes that I had over here. So yesterday I took out the radishes and hopefully now they're not gonna be shaded and they're gonna start growing. The spinach is bolting and to be expected, it's very hot in this greenhouse. Then we have the lettuce over there and that spinach over there is almost pretty much done. So I need to come in here and plant some hot loving crops like peppers and maybe sweet potatoes and start growing my summer crops. This right here is also a glacier tomato and this glacier tomato has already been pollinated and there's a glacier tomato growing right here. I'm so excited about that. These peppers, I used a medium soil that was supposed to be organic and I mixed it with a lot of compost. But the soil medium was made out of this mulchy type thing and the plants are not loving it in here. So I might end up taking the peppers out of here and just putting them into the ground. They might just do better in the ground than in those pots. This medium is not very good. Right here in these two little pots I have chayote plants and I'm going to be placing this on my pergola very soon so that they can grow out and hopefully grow some chayotes. To my surprise, there's already strawberries growing in the garden. It's crazy how early the strawberries are coming in this year. The strawberries are under the hoop house and they are producing strawberries quite early. And the ones that I have in the yard, they're not producing just yet. So if you want to get a few extra early strawberries, put them into a little greenhouse and they will produce really fast. The lettuce is starting to bolt and this happens in the summer every time. They just start bolting because it's too hot for them. One way to combat this is to put the lettuce in a very shady location and that way it bolts a lot less slower. I'll show you some lettuces that are growing in a shady spot and they are still good and not bolting yet. The back orchard has filled up with leaves and there is some fruits already growing. I've already shown you these. These are gala apples and they are already growing. And I have like six or seven on the tree and I just ordered this netting that I'm going to put over them very soon and hopefully we can keep the squirrels from eating them. In this row I planted a new row of fruit trees in the winter months and right now they're leafing out and so far all of them have leafed out so I have been 100% successful at growing them. <laughs> we'll see if they survive the winter. But this is a gala apple that I planted in the winter months. This is a hazelnut tree, and this one is a companion for this little hazelnut tree. They cross-pollinate each other, so you need both of them to get nuts. This down here is a 
chinkapine chestnut and this is a companion plant for another one that is right over there with that bamboo stick and that one it's its partner because they need to cross pollinate each other I have the tomato plants in here already and they are 12 inches tall just about this right here is a plum tree it's a stainly plum I had to transplant it into this spot right here it put out flowers but it dropped all the flowers but that was the first year it put out flowers so I'm hoping that this new location will have more sunlight for it and it will grow bigger this year and hopefully next year we can taste the plums this beautiful tree right here is a persimmon tree and this is a Fuju persimmon and it's on its second year here and it's putting out little blossoms it hasn't bloomed yet but I'm looking forward to looking at these blooms the fruit is right here you can see the fruit the fruit is right here behind this and hopefully we can see the bloom later on and it has a bunch of them in here so I'm kind of concerned about that because they are there are too many in this tree to support so I have it tied down to this little post um, I don't know the tree is too big for its own good right now so I'm kind of thinking about maybe topping it but that's a harsh Thing to do when there's so much fruit over here so we'll have to see what I end up doing what would you do let it grow a little bit more maybe this main trunk gets a little bit healthier and stronger for the meantime I'll keep it tied down to the to the bamboo but I know that that weakens the growth of the main stem so I'm kind of conflicted right now on what to do with this little tree my hardy bananas are already leafed out. This is the earliest I've ever seen it. And I'm going to attribute that to the mulch that I put here in the fall last year. I also want to show you an experiment that I did. Taro is a root that grows in the tropics. And I have seen people growing elephant ears outdoors here in Son 7A. And I had a feeling that if I could protect the taro in the ground, it would regrow. And I just saw the first leaf of the taro and it is here. So it means that it can be perennialized here in zone 7A. How crazy is that? Last, last winter we had a day that we got down to 7 degrees and this thing was under a lot of leaf mulch and it survived. I am so happy about this one. This tiny little leaf right here is proof that taro can be over winter here in zone 7A. Isn't that amazing? This is under a lot of mulch, so the mulch kept it insulated, and that's how it survived the winter. And I'm thinking this is going to be my method of growing a starchy f potato that is... And this is going to be my method of growing a starchy food here in Zone 7. Because if you can grow taro in Zone 7 and make it go through the winter, this would be an amazing solution for not having to grow too many potatoes. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I do love potatoes, so I will continue to grow a lot of potatoes. But taro is one of the fruits, but taro is one of the vegetables that I grew up eating. So if I can grow it here in Son 7A and be successful at overwintering it, that's going to be amazing. This is beautiful. The nectarine tree is loaded with fruit this year. There is tons and tons of them, but I have noticed an issue and it's starting to drop the fruit. And I think the tree is deciding it has too much fruit, so it is dropping some of it into the ground. So it's okay. I hope it's not the squirrels. I did buy the netting that I'm going to put over this tree. So hopefully once it arrives tonight, tomorrow, I'll put it on. And hopefully I can protect it from losing any of the fruit to squirrels. The little peach from seed is, is so tall right now. It's almost as tall as the one that I planted uh, from the nursery and it's crazy. I have to top it every once in a while because it's getting a little unruly on me. And check out all my buckets with potatoes. I have all of these buckets with potatoes. It's even blooming already. It's crazy fast. Check out how many I have. I have so many buckets with potatoes. This year is the year of the potato. I love potatoes. They're one of the most tasty crops when you grow them. They're cheap to buy at the store, but they do not taste the same as the ones you can grow yourself. 
This whole trellis here is planted with tomatoes and each little bamboo here is going to have a single stem tomato growing. Check it out. I can't remember the exact number but I think it's over 20 of them and I think there's three to four different varieties. They're all labeled but uh, we'll find out soon enough what each one of them is. I have this gooseberry that I planted at the base of my fruit trees and this year it's putting out some fruits. And check out this little green gooseberry. I can't remember if it's gooseberry or currant. It's probably the same thing anyways. So here it is. It's still a little hard. So hopefully very soon it's starting to start ripening and I can eat it. They're supposed to be pretty tart. <laughs> so I might have to make them a preserve and add a little bit of sugar to them so I can eat them. I think this is a black currant right here, but no fruit yet. So hopefully next year we'll get to see some fruit on it. The milkweed is spreading like crazy and it attracts a lot of aphids, but it doesn't affect the flowers. This is for the monarch butterflies and it actually sends out little shoots through the ground and it spreads through the ground. And you can see right here, there's a baby from it as well. And there's another baby from it right here as well. It has moved from here across the pathway and under the peach tree and here it is last year it produced a ton of seeds and i casted them into the wind so hopefully they are growing somewhere else now this massive amount of plants is jerusalem artichokes and they can be quite aggressive in their growth since they are so aggressive and very good at growing i can use the biomass to do some cheap mulching. So I just collect the biomass or the plant itself and I throw it on my bed here and this will decompose in place and create natural compost for my plants to grow. So even though it is a little bit aggressive when it grows, you can utilize that virtue that it has as a resource for composting and creating more biomass and creating a lot of space for microorganisms to live under the soil and provide good health for your fruit trees or your or your vegetables last year when i harvested my potatoes i had very beautiful green plants that i was very sad about because i was harvesting the potatoes but the plants look very healthy still so i thought Maybe I could grow these potatoes again. So I took those plants and I put them into a hole right back there. Now the plants became a little bit yellow and they withered and died. And I thought, well, that method didn't work. <laughs> but this spring, the potatoes started coming back out of this hole. And I've never grown potatoes there before, except for those plants that I put in the ground last year. So that is crazy. The potatoes reseeded themselves. Maybe there were tiny little potatoes on there, but I took all the potatoes that were harvestable out of the ground last year and I placed them in this location where I'd never placed potatoes before. So those are definitely those plants coming back up. Can you believe it? So these potatoes are volunteer potatoes from those potato plants that I put into the ground last year, which makes me think this year, when I harvest all of these plants from these buckets, I'm gonna put the plants in a spot that I haven't grown potatoes in just yet and put them all back in there and see if I can get a second crop from the plants. And I think it should work. You just have to try new things in the garden and experiment and see what happens. There are no mistakes in the garden. They are just learning experiences because you can learn from the experiments that you try. I've been working on my Zen area and yesterday I was able to put in this little hammock here. I took down the tree when I bought the property first. So I'm using those posts. These are black walnut posts. So I'm hoping they don't rot for a few years. And now this area is gonna be just planted with a lot of different tropical looking plants. Like this beautiful trifoliate orange. This is a little orange tree that should produce in like five years. Then I have elderberry. I also have some cactus and some banana plants growing right back here. 
so in the future I'll be able to sit here next to my tropical plants just lay in the hammocks just lay in the hammock and listen to the birds because this is gonna be my tropical Zen area in my galvanized raised beds I am growing some peas as well and check out the beautiful peas that are already here they don't get too big for us because we keep eating them as soon as they come and my daughter and I really love peas so we're gonna keep up with them this year why so we're gonna keep up and we're gonna continue to eat a lot of these peas they don't make it into the house because we eat them out here as we take garden walks check out this beautiful abundance right here these are wine cup mushrooms and we've had a lot of rain recently and they have been coming up I spread spores for these mushrooms and the mulch two years ago and now they're just perennial here and they come back every time we have a rain they come back and they are so delicious they taste like a portobello mushroom and they're no different than anything that you would buy at the store so why not spend about twenty dollars in one packet of sawdust that you can add to your wood chips and then you have mushrooms for the rest of your life probably this bed right here I am growing some taro and this taro is the same one that I had growing over there last year. I dug it out from there and I put it in pots. I overwinter it inside my house and now I have planted it out here. And I have sprouted several more. I have sprouted several more of the taros that I bought at the store this year. And this bed is going to be mostly taro. But in the back of this right here, you can't see it because it's under the ground. I have ginger growing. I sprouted the ginger two months ago and now it has very tiny shoots and a little bit of tiny roots and in about a month or so this is going to be full with ginger and taro check out the potato plants that I have here my neighbor gave me these plants it was a bunch of potatoes that were sprouting in her kitchen and I decided to put them in here and this is full with unfinished compost and this unfinished compost is what they're growing in and potatoes don't need a lot of nutrients to grow they just need a good medium to grow in and i think this finish and i think this unfinished compost is going to be just great for them there you can see more of the wine cup mushrooms this is the stage that i like to eat them in there before they unopen this right here is one very tasty mushroom this right here is my bed where i was trying to grow my cool weather crops but the weather has not been cooperating uh, it got really hot uh, when I planted these so this is my Napa cabbage and it's already bolting you can see I will harvest these and eat them still but they're not the best because now they're sprouting but I'm still gonna eat them right over here I'm attempting to grow some broccoli hopefully I'll have enough time to grow the broccoli out before it gets too hot but it's looking quite well this spot in my yard right here only gets about four to five hours of sunlight because I have the garage there and there's this big tree right here that produces a lot of shade but this is the perfect spot to grow lettuce and this plants right here that don't want to be too hot so if you won't have a spot in your yard that doesn't get a much sunlight it only gets four hours of sunlight then that's the perfect spot to grow your cool weather crops and your lettuces and th and the leafy greens my papa tree is getting quite tall this year it's putting out new leaves and new branches which is new before the last few years it has only grown vertically like this but this year it's pushing out new branches so that's quite exciting because it's going to fill up this wall that i want to become quite a wall of greenery right back here i have papas i have honeyberries down there and then down there i have a plant that i'll do a video on this plant right here, I'm gonna make a video on later on. This is an air potato and it's a Chinese yam. I think that's what it's called. It has been imported to the United States for a long time and it has been growing here for a long time. But some people would consider this an invasive. But if you know how to manage your crops and your plants, this shouldn't become a problem. If you harvest the food from it, it should be good. Last year, I dug it out and it has a big tuber that is starchy and is edible and is really delicious. And it also produces aerial roots that are like this size and they're potatoes and they're just a starchy 
they're just a starchy little fruit that is perennial to sown seven. So this is a great solution for growing starchy foods in a food forest type setting. This plant right here is a native passion fruit and this thing it is aggressive and it grows like crazy it grows all over the yard and I have been digging it out as much as I can because as much as I like to eat it it is too aggressive and it's not gonna let anything else grow so this year I'm gonna dig it all out and hopefully not have too many of it growing in my yard I'm pretty sure it's gonna be here forever because it's hard to get rid of but uh, now I'm kind of regretting putting this one into the ground that one it's much lower as spreading so don't worry about that one spreading too fast because the winter does kill it quite well and you don't have to worry too much about that in this bed right here i have eggplants and peppers four beds of only eggplants and peppers and it has been so cold that they haven't been growing very much but i'm hopeful that very soon it's going to start getting very hot and they're going to start putting on some real growth and then we're going to have lots of peppers and eggplants this plant right here is my elderberry and it is getting huge and I keep trimming it and now I'm taking the trimmings and putting them on the raised beds like that because it is so good at growing that I can use it as biomass to mulch my other beds and that is a really good method for utilizing a plant that really thrives in your zone. It produces beautiful flowers like this one and you can use these flowers to make a champagne I did that last year check out the video on that and you can also take the berries at the end of the year and make a syrup and it's really good for your immune system the grapevine is putting on a ton of grapes this year check out how many grapes it has it has so many clusters and I'm so excited because this is my plant that I've had for about 10 years now and I transplanted into this spot and it has been growing last year it put out like four or five clusters but this year is the year of the grape hopefully I'll get about a hundred clusters and check out these beautiful blackberries that I have growing here this vine I have trained it to go all along the fence and in the future all you're gonna see is blackberries grapes elderberries pawpaws all along this wall is going to be full of edible food and that's over a hundred feet worth of just food waiting for you to come and pick it how lucky would we be if everybody decided that along their fence they are going to grow food you could grow more food that you can eat yourself and that's the fact i grow more food than i can eat myself so i give it to my neighbors and they are happy and i am happy This right here is a perfect example of how weedy and crazy I like to grow things. So out of this little raised bed, I have some, um, I have some blackberries growing. You can see the main blackberries growing right here. And I also have some rhubarb growing underneath of that. But I also wanted a little bit more beauty, so I planted these flowers. And these are gladiolus. So in the summer months, this becomes so beautiful and it's a wall of beauty because there are flowers, huge leaves, and then we have the blackberries growing there as well. This is my propagation station. When you start gardening, you're going to have a lot more plants than you know what to do with. So I take cuttings from the elderberry and I put them in pots and I grow them out. And I sell them sometimes, but I mostly give them away to people because it's good to share the bounty check out how many elderberry i have here i also have persimmon trees mint in some pots blackberries so you can with a little space here you can supply your neighbors with all the fruits that they are going to need this arbor here has a lot of grapes as well this is a conquer grape that was supposed to be seedless but it does have seeds so that's all right then i have more dill i have pawpaw right over here i have more blackberries in between this year is going to be a year of blackberry and right, right down at this way i have more pawpaws and more of this little bush that is a trifoliate orange so in a few years i'm going to be the one growing grapes and oranges <laughs> my front lawn is starting to get full 
Check out this beautiful raised bed that I have here. I have some huge romaine lettuce growing here. Then I have some flowers that are coming up. And then I have marigolds in between. More flowers in the back. This is gonna be full of flowers come summer. Check out this bachelor's buttons flowers. They are just beautiful in the wind. This is comfrey. I'm gonna be using comfrey to spread the biomass along the raised beds this year. Hopefully it grows quite a bit. Check out the size of this leaf right here. This is a rhubarb and this is just massive. It's like 20 inches across and maybe like 25, 28 inches long. That's a rhubarb right there and it's very happy. Now right along this road here, I'm growing more of this Butchler's Buttons. And right behind here, I have planted Xenias Galore. They're supposed to be coming up soon. And I see a few of the little seedlings coming up right there. I planted a ton of them, but only a few have come up. So if they don't come up soon, we're gonna have to replant them. That's my little artichoke plant right there. I can see it that it's hanging down. I can see a ton of aphids are growing on it. So I gotta come out here and spray them with some water. And after I spray it with some water, I'll probably spray it with some neem oil and soap because that's what I like to do when we have a problem. I really want that to survive. So I need to operate and intervene. I do see some ladybugs in there and I've seen birds eating them away at the bugs, but I think it's an infestation and I gotta take care of it myself. Beautiful rhododendron was already here when I bought the place, but it's just beautiful. And every year it gives us this beautiful show of flowers. Right back here we have this beautiful rose bush. Last year I gave it a nice haircut and it was very thankful that I did that because now it's putting on a ton of flowers. The rest of the garden is looking quite nice right now. I have a lot of onions over there, some garlic, and I need to start harvesting the garlic scapes soon. I came out last night and I saw that we have garlic scapes now. And these are delicious in pesto or just any cooking. Check out my sage. It is getting quite big this year. And I also have more peas. This is a little pomegranate tree right here. There's a lot growing in the garden this year, everyone. I'm so excited and happy. Check, a, check this out. These are tiny little <laughs> pea plants, but they have bees on them. Isn't that crazy? This side of the yard, I'm growing more garlic. I'm growing my yuzu plant right here. Hopefully it survives the winter. I got more peas back there. Pomegranate, walking stick colors or perennial colors. I'm trying to save the seeds from this. I have my pineapple guava right here. I'm trying to save some seeds for my cilantro. So these are the only few plants that I've left. This whole thing was full with cilantro, but I decided to take it out and put in a few more of my plants. This right here is a little ginger plant that I have growing here and it's almost leafing out. This right here is my elephant garlic and it's gonna bloom this year. Um, usually, usually I would cut this because I want the bulb to grow bigger, but this year from elephant garlic, you can also start them from seed. So I'm gonna let the little seeds develop and that way I can build my stock of seeds for elephant garlic because it's quite rare. Not a lot of people grow elephant garlic around here. So I want to be able to share it, maybe sell some of it too, so I can uh, make a little bit of money and buy more plants because that's all I do. I make a little bit of money and I buy more plants. Right this way I have my lemon tree and the lemon tree has a couple lemons on this year. There's some baby lemons right here. And I think these will grow out to be full on lemons and it's starting to bloom again. So hopefully I'll have some more lemons from this tiny little tree. Kayla the dog makes sure that the squirrels don't eat too many of our crops. She's quite good at that. And she's quite a good rat killer as well, which is good to have. This is my little guava plant that I have growing in a pot. 
hopefully I'll get a few guavas from here this year. Uh, last year I put out two or three flowers, but they did not get pollinated, so I'm hopeful that this year I can get them to pollinate. Right back here I have a little nopal. This right here is a little baby nopal or a prickly cactus that produces fruit that is quite large. And this one is quite delicious. My friend gave me this two pads last year and I put them into this pot. They grew in the pot and they have survived the winter. I knew that they were survived the winter, but I didn't know if they were gonna survive because they were in a pot. But now I know they survive. I think I'm gonna put them back there in my little zen area. The fig tree was kind of decimated this year. Uh, some of the branches survived and some branches did not survive. So you can see here, some of them are quite dead still. But some of the center one is pushing out new growth from here. So hopefully I'll get some figs from here. There was a lot of figs on here, on these branches that are alive, but none of them, not a lot of them got pollinated. See, only one here was pollinated. Only this one was pollinated. And that tree over there also has a few that got pollinated. So pollination was quite bad for these because they bloom really early. So hopefully we'll have more fruit on this new branches that are forming right now. If you're gonna have a garden as extensive as mine, you're gonna need to grow a lot of your plants from seed. And this is what this whole space is all about. I like to grow a lot of my own plants from seed because that's the way to save money. And it's very productive to do it that way. And I can propagate a ton more of seeds over here and plants and hopefully sell those plants to make a little bit more money so I can buy more fruit trees because who doesn't want more fruit trees in their yard? So that is all I have for you today, my friends. I hope that you found some little nuggets of information that you can use in your garden here today. If you have any questions about the cultivars that I am growing, name them down below in the comments, and I sure wanna help you grow more food in your yard. So make sure that you do comment down below and hopefully I can help you with a little advice. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you on the next one.